greatest thing for me has been to speak and to feel like I am heard. And there's so much, you know, that society taught me that I could not speak. In my experience, music was the one shot that made it over the wall that told me that even if you don't speak your truth, you can sing it. I know that music has saved my life again and again and again and again throughout the years. And it's just a community that I find in a song oftentimes is more pure than that in the world around me. And I find that that's what a lot of my favorite artists do. Is they pick me up in whatever room I'm in and they just build entire worlds for me to, you know, frolic in. That's what I hope to do for my listeners as well. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's go on an adventure. Can we bring down my vocal song? It's kind of hot in the mix. I didn't find the blues. I feel like the blues found me. You know, I was living in Atlanta, I was 21, and I just started playing the guitar. It's a high school dropout from Greenville, South Carolina, and I heard Skip James, Hard Time Killing Four Blues, and it stopped me, and it was the first time that I, I understood what it meant to be black and Southern and weird and kind of an outlaw and someone that steals and someone that sins, but his blues allowed me to be at peace with that and be at peace with the parts of myself that the church, you know, did not sanctify, the parts of myself that the church could not baptize out me. So the blues found me at a point in my life where if they had not found me, I would be in jail or dead. And the blues continues to save my life again and again and again and again. I believe that the thing that's helped me most with my mental health is grace for myself. I feel like oftentimes I'm the hardest on myself. I'm not very forgiving of myself for understanding. And I, you know, there's like this rigid idea of like right and wrong that was, you know, taught to me growing up. And there's no room for you to know yourself if you don't abide by grace toward yourself. So this was a year for me of truly forgiving myself and allowing myself to expand in my humanity and stop looking at myself with other people's eyes because I realize that when I'm feeling the most anxious or depressed, it's not my own gaze that I'm looking at myself with. It's the world's gaze and it tears me down every time. I've had to mind my business the past year. I've had to make my own business to mind. And that's the thing that I want to keep up. I want to be able to, to keep telling people no. I want to be able to say, I don't want to. Then have that be enough and not have to qualify myself. Just no, no. Don't feel like you have to rush to get back out to that world. Like, just take your time. You don't want to buy any jack So, do you, boo. But connection this year has just been with the little patch of my backyard. I look out my window, I see my magnolia tree. I go downstairs and I hug it. I put a hammock underneath it and I put my feet in the dirt at least once a day. And that's connection for me. It's just feeling rooted to the ground. And that lets me handle other humans. <laughs> Is that too brutally honest? Like, is that, is that like a bitch answer? Like, well, first of all, I don't like people at all. I like my trees and I like my grass. And there was a time I wouldn't have said that, but I honestly, I, I like being connected to the earth. I was living my life completely overwhelmed and overcharged before COVID and that shit, gotta stop. I was in therapy and it was um, the first time that I'd ever talked to anybody. I didn't know what to say. I was like, um, I don't know what to do. And she's like, just tell me about your day. Tell me about, you know, what are, what are some thoughts that you pause on? And it was kind of just like releasing a breath um, that I didn't realize I'd been holding. It's interesting being a woman in music, especially a black woman. What's really guided me through my music career has been the women of the blues that came before me. And they start telling their own stories and they, you know, they stare down the church, they stare down their men, they stare down white supremacy, they stare down Jim Crow, and they made the blues. For me, storytelling, it's not about just telling stories of, of hope. It's stories of audacity. It's stories of courage. It's stories of not giving a f It's stories of allowing your, you know, hurt to be seen or your shame or things that you're not proud of. Like that's, that's the blues. But we have to learn how to tell our stories to ourselves, honestly, before we can even hope to share them with anybody else. You're the only person that can tell your story. I chose to play today On and On by Erica Badu. It's sacred to me because I first heard it when I was in fifth grade and it was the last year that I spent in Christian school um, growing up in South Carolina. And when I was 11, my family left the church. So I was looking for something that was bigger and deeper and felt more 
warm than the idea of a Christian God. And I dove into my imagination and the first time I heard on and on, it felt like Erica Badu was waiting for me to meet her there. She just gave me this entire world to swim through in one song. That was all of her imagination. And for a black girl from the deep south, that song was kind of like permission that I could be a witch. <laughs> keeps 